All right, so the, uh, the rate at which people are joining seems to have slowed down, so um, I, I guess we should get started. Um, hopefully you can all hear me fine. Uh, this is the uh, the second session in the Internet Architecture Board's workshop on the environmental impacts of Internet applications and systems. Uh, and I'm uh, Colin Perkins, uh, and uh, one of the, the, the group who's uh, organizing this workshop, along with Yari and a number of others. Um, so the, the, the second session is entitled, What Do We Know? Uh, and the goal, I think, today is to try and understand um, what we know uh, about the environmental impact and, and to some extent also what we don't know and what are the open questions. So to, to start off today, uh, I just want to, to recap the, the ground rules uh, and the, this, this, these are the same rules that, that Yari uh, put up uh, on Monday. Uh, a reminder that we are recording the session uh, and the, the recording will be published uh, and will go up on YouTube uh, uh, after the meeting. Uh, the position papers that you submitted are public and are on the IAB's website. Um, and uh, this is uh, a professional meeting and we expect uh, people to, to uh, abide by the usual professional standards of behavior. And that's, uh, uh, of course, any, any kind of harassment is, is not accepted in this, this meeting. Uh, please try to be polite. Uh, please try to explain your viewpoint in an understandable manner. Um, please try to learn from other people's viewpoints. Uh, we've got quite a, a diverse group of people here, um, people with uh, a quite a, a wide range of backgrounds. Um, some people are from the academic community, some from industry, um, some who have been heavily involved in the ITF for, for many years, some, some who haven't. Um, some from, a, I think, perhaps a, a wider range of backgrounds than that. Um, there's a risk that we talk past each other, um, so please do, um, you know, as I say, take time to explain yourself. And uh, if there are uh, confusions and misunderstandings, um, accept that others are coming from perhaps different places, and we're, we're all here to learn. Uh, the URL on the slide has uh, pointers to the uh, the, the materials. Um, the um, the the slides uh, will be going up on the the ITF data tracker as, as we have them, uh, and I'm, I'm sure someone will put a link in the in the chat. Um, so the agenda for the workshop, uh, we've got four sessions. Uh, this is the the second session. Um, uh, on Monday, we 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 looked at the big picture. Um, what we're focusing on today is what we know. So we're trying to, to learn uh, what we understand and what we don't understand about the envir environmental impact of the network. Uh, we're trying to understand what, what data we have or can readily get, um, whether we understand that data, whether we need to, uh, more measurements, more research, uh, and, and whether the methodologies are sufficient and where are the gaps, where are the things we don't know. And also we're here to try and think about you know, who we might need to talk to, uh, who we might need to connect with that we're not already talking to, to get access to information that's needed. Um, and if there are areas where we, we don't necessarily have the, the expertise we need um, and where we need to, uh, as I say, form connections and, and tr try and enhance our understanding. This will feed into the session tomorrow, uh, same time tomorrow, which is looking at uh, protocol improvements, implementation improvements and concrete actions we can be taking. Uh, and the session on Monday next week, which is uh, starting to look at the future developments and the plans and, and what are the next steps. The the goals for today, as I say, are to understand what we, we do and do not understand about the situation. Um, and I, I guess the phrase known unknowns and known knowns and so on will, will come into this discussion at some point. Uh, one one thing I did want to highlight um, from Vesna's talk in, on Monday, um, there was a, a suggestion to um, put efforts into the actual actions. Um, you know, it, it's easy to talk about what what data we would like to know, what measurements we would like to take, um, and it's it's easy to continually focus on measuring and understanding and improving that understanding. Um, and that's that's certainly interesting, um, but I, I would encourage people to focus on not necessarily what we would like to know, but what we need to know in order to make a difference. Right. 
let's let's focus on how to achieve concrete action was not just how to improve our understanding of the situation. Uh, the agenda for today, um, we've got three uh, short talks to try and set the scene. Um, Michael Wessel will, will be, begin by talking about uh, what, what we know about energy usage and uh, if there any, is any misinformation in this space. Um, uh, Jens and Nina, uh, I think it's Jens will be, uh, and apologies if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, will be talking about um, network uh, um, energy consumption and trends. And then Daniel will be talking about the role of peak demand. Uh, and the goal here is to give you some information, highlight some open questions and challenges. Uh, the uh, we, we should then have a, an hour or so for open discussion after that. Um, and I've, I've got two slides uh, to, to structure that discussion. The focus of the discussion will be on, on what we know. Uh, what are the known unknowns? What are the things we know we don't know and, and need to find more information in order to have an impact here? Uh, what are the risks and concerns and who should we be talking to? What, what sort of outreach do we need in order to um, complete our understanding and in order to um, help others understand what, what we know? Uh, and with that, uh, I think that's all I have. Uh, are there any questions uh, about the agenda um, before we move on? And I don't see any questions. So the first talk is Michael Wessel. Uh, can you show your slides? Yes. Let's see. Sharing PowerPoint. Does that work? Yep. People... Okay. Ah, yeah. Do not show this message again. Sharing content, blah, blah, blah. So is that, you're seeing the full screen or my view? Or... We're, we're seeing the full screen. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so this is about the internet energy usage, not all of ICT's energy usage, um, uh, which is supposedly a bit smaller, but maybe, well, depends. <laughs> and a little bit about misinformation. People have uh, already done some spoilering actually on the mailing list regarding some things I was going to talk about. Uh, here I'm doing my, you know, to, making an effort to give a very, very precise overview of magnitude relationships. It's exactly like that. You're that tiny spot, your own footprint. This could be a city. This could be a country. This could be the internet. And that's uh, the internet or all of ICT, depending on stupid claims. Now, we're going to get back to these relationships, but actually the point is that these are maybe not completely off. Um, we'll see. So I'll begin with nonsense just to get it done, <laughs> to get it out of the way. Uh, there are some examples of nonsense and I also did like this email thing that uh, people started already writing about in, uh, in emails. <laughs> um, so Mike Berners-Lee, the brother of Tim Berners-Lee, he has been talking to the press apparently about this uh, issue quite a bit. And um, I just came across these press statements some time ago, actually, from a presentation I gave for students where I was trying to make the point that there is just lots and lots and lots of nonsense in the press that we don't need to believe. You know, giving very concrete, precise numbers about an email uh, that to begin with is maybe idiotic, just as an idea, I would say. Um, but, you know, it says it ranges from 0 0.3 gram to 4 gram, and then, you know, some other message it says from 0 0.03 to 26, and so forth. And then much later, uh, there is a press article where um, Mike Berners-Lee himself actually told the Financial Times that, well, this is kind of a rowing back thing. It seems that uh, he must have gotten responses to these uh, things that he that that went out to the press because he then said that this is back of the envelope maths and 
maybe it's useful to start conversations, but there are really bigger questions. I guess the main point of this slide is that there are many URLs here, right? You see all these statements coming from various sources and it goes on. Here it says a typical office worker sends and receives so many emails per day. You know, what's a typical number anyway here, but over the course of the year, this is as much as flying from London to Bruges, where I don't even think there's a direct flight to begin with, but uh, it's watching 955 movies, all that kind of stuff. Um, really, simply put, um, you can try and calculate these things and compare them, but trust me, I did actually try and there is just nothing here that makes any sense at all. All these numbers don't match. It's all just nonsense. Um, there's also this article saying that climate change is going to make us more stupid. I just leave that here without saying more about it. Um, the reason for me to talk about this is that I do agree with also uh, Jonathan Comey, who has said that this is a harmful thing. People uh, go out saying these things to the press, it gets spread, and it may actually have a negative effect for the cause that we are having here, which is to uh, <clears throat> consider the, the environmental impact of the internet. It may cause some people not to take these whole, this whole kind of effort serious, and uh, especially when these people work at funding bodies, then this is not a good thing. We can also consider Brandolini's law here, which is also called the bullshit asymmetry principle. Basically, uh, the fact that it, it takes uh, an order of magnitude more effort to refute bullshit than to put it out there. Um, Jonathan Kumi has done a good job at, at quoting or well, pointing at these things. So I put some links here to these keynote slides that have many examples. Uh, this does not compute article and also the separating fact from fiction article that was sent to the workshop mailing list in an attachment just maybe a quarter before this. Uh, I think it's interesting reading indeed. I'm done with this already. <laughs> let's, let's look at reality. Uh, my take is that um, if we can come with some conservative estimates that are possibly reasonably realistic and possibly go out to the press with them, with them then uh, we may be able to you know, counter these things a little bit and, and maybe this is a better, better thing than having these crazy exaggerations. Now, what are these estimates? Um, I have made a start with this table that our IAB submission has and uh, what I did is I didn't really try to, well, try to gather data myself, but I uh, just looked at reports that others have made. Now, when you look at reports, actually, um, you know, we have already discussed this, I think, to some degree in the first meeting that uh, there is no even no notion of the Internet. What is the Internet? You know, it considers, uh, it consists of, of devices, the wired part, the wireless part, devices, you know, customer premises equipment, user equipment. There is the embodied energy of devices, which is from constructing the thing that we're using. Uh, there are data centers, which, you know, may, may be, uh, well, yeah, things may differ quite a bit. And uh, the study is also different in age. So what I did is I just tried to find a couple of sources. And from these sources, I arrived at a range of 0.5% to 1.17% of the global CO2 footprint. Now, my point here is not that this is the number. My point is that it's probably not 10%, it's probably not 0.001%, but it's probably something in that rough magnitude. One possible derivation, just to make this a bit concrete, is that uh, you can take the Smarter 2030 report that's been cited a lot which states that uh, ICT in general has a CO2 footprint of 2.7% of global emissions in 2020. And uh, there are numbers from 2012 that say telecom electricity is, IC is a third of ICT. Now, this may have changed. Chances are that now it's bigger. But uh, if now it's a third, then we have something like 0.9%. So, you know, it's probably something in that rough magnitude. Um, is this a small number? 0.9% uh, doesn't exactly sound very big, but, uh, you know, to begin with, the Internet's energy usage has been compared against the aviation industry a lot. I think that is a bad idea. 
because the aviation industry is somewhat hard to talk about because uh, that number of 0.9% is actually comparable to the CO2 em emissions of the aviation industry. But then in aviation, we also have uh, methane and other greenhouse gases playing a role. So if you take those into account, then the number of the aviation industry is significantly higher. And then I've recently read uh, something that, that apparently quite recent study that finds that uh, the influence of water vapor is actually quite significant and this water vapor up there in the atmosphere stays long and contributes to heating up the planet and if you consider this then this is way above I think three percent so it's hard to talk about and uh, I think can lead to confusions instead of that what I did the other day was to take a look at uh, this our world in data <coughs> web page that gives an overview of co2 emissions per country which again, you know, is very broad because what does it mean a country? I mean, each country runs internet devices, right? So even that conversation gets hard. But uh, anyway, you know, to get an idea of the of the magnitude here, um, according to this page, the 20, 21 emissions of the UK were 0.93%. So that's a comparable number. Norway, where I live, uh, has 0.11%. Here in Norway, there's a strong push to for everybody to uh, reduce the personal CO2 footprint. There are people going to great lengths um, to do this. There's a public press offering a calculator. You can see what is my personal footprint. Of course, it's a good idea to you know, change the perception of people and make them aware of it and uh, make more people join this. But I think it's important to put things into perspective a little bit. The population here is 5.4 million. So roughly uh, the per person contribution is uh, 0. Many 0. 2 percent. <laughs> it's tiny. Now, this, these are the people here. Um, it's also a small fraction of the world population. But it is interesting to consider that if we could, with a standard, somehow reduce the Internet's power, power say, by 10 percent. I mean, even if you think of 1 percent, right, maybe that's more realistic. Even then, this is, this is a big number compared to... Uh, you know, a couple of a couple of people. Now, 10% that would be a, you know again for going going from 0.9% to 0.81, which is 4.5 million Norwegians, and uh, you can imagine them all. You know, wearing Viking helmets and things. So many. Okay, I'm stopping here. It it does get a bit silly, but my, the point is that uh, the potential of a standard that has an impact, a global impact on the internet is truly enormous and it's going to be enormous you know whether this is one percent two percent three percent zero point half percent it's very big getting back to the picture from the beginning uh i don't think we're so wrong with this country and internet comparison also because we have these rings which means that it's hard to understand what the size really is <laughs> And uh, Euronos, Neptune, I don't know, these could be uh, potential savings from IETF standards, who knows, you know, time, a bit smaller than that, but, you know, it's about these general, general, very broad relationships. That's already everything I had to say. That's it. All right, thank you, Michael. Um, I'm curious, how many Norwegians are there? Is, is, is four and a half million all of them? Ah, uh, uh, all together. I thought in in the meeting. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's a bit more. I think it's five and a half or five something. Okay. So it's, right. it's, 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 it's almost the whole country. It's the whole country. All right. Does anyone have any sensible questions for Michael? Uh, I saw those. Uh... Okay, so, so, so I saw Kirsten and Eve have questions in the chat. So Eve, ah. Eve, Eve says, are the particular standard, ITF standards, we should scrutinize for these, for these savings. No, I, I guess that's possible uh, uh, for tomorrow, but uh, sort of, uh, it's a loaded question. Yeah, exactly. That's a long, <laughs> it's a large question. But I, but I, but I put it out there mostly to figure out if in your mind you had certain ones that you um, feel are, you know, could use improvement or certain techniques that you know are well, that are used widely that, you know, we should be thinking about extending or changing um, places to start. 
Yeah, I'm a transport layer person, so I've been thinking about uh, transport layer protocols that send lots of X. <laughs> Very simply, you know, if you could just imagine reducing. I mean, now we usually send approximately an X for every other packet. So I've been, I've been just wondering, you know, if we would take this down to a, an X for every quarter. I mean, every fourth packet, you know, would that have a significant influence on the whole internet? Uh, that's a silly way to do it, but we could be a bit more intelligent about how many acts we send. We could, uh, I mean, I'm interested in multicast. I find this very interesting, this uh, paper that was in there. I think your own paper had interesting suggestions about routing along, uh, well, not just energy saving, but uh, depending on carbon efficiency. So, you know, I think there are plenty of things that we could do. Yeah. Okay, I mean, we're, I think we have time allocated tomorrow to talk about um, things we could do. Uh, and the focus here is perhaps more on understanding what we know and how to how to measure the impact. Uh, Lars, is, is that your hand up? Yeah, and my hand is green, which is it interesting. Is, which is so it's a new yeah. WebEx client, or I, I did something <laughs> different. It's not yellow anymore. It's confusing the hell out of me. Anyway, so one sort of piece of feedback maybe, I mean, you, you showed these nonsense graph uh, uh, metrics or measurements where that were reported. And um, like many others that I've seen, they all, they, they throw together, they bundle up like the networking stuff and the application. And they say, you know, it's per email, right? And I, I actually find that a bit confusing, right? And it sort of muddles the waters because if you look at the data center and you look at your, you know, the stuff that burns energy, right? It's the stuff that gets hot. And that's usually the CPUs and the GPUs. It's not so much the network, right? And so obviously, the, so, so, so it, well, not obviously, but I, I assume that means that the application processing part is actually probably contributing more uh, to the power usage compared to the communication, which is, uh, I, as far as I know, pretty efficient, right? It, it, it's getting more efficient since the, the switch chips are getting better. Um, and so I wonder if there's anybody who sort of tries to tease that apart and tries to talk about, you know, um, power use or CO2 emissions at the different layers, if you will, right? At the application layer um, and then at, at for the communication part and, and for other aspects, or is it all always reported as, you know, this, this big lump thing? Okay, uh, well, since I, I don't know if I'm the one supposed to answer that, since it's a broad command for everyone, I suppose. But I mean, uh, these, of course, obviously these nonsense studies have lumped everything together. Um, there are ways to get CPU and memory with our APL. Uh, I was wondering if there are APIs that may give something like that in software, because that would be actually especially interesting for, for Nix. I don't know of any. If I'm the mute button, there's maybe one for the what we don't know discussion later is what's the breakdown between different aspects of the system. Uh, Colin, would you mind if I just give a quick answer to Michael? Of course, jump in. Uh, so uh, one of the things I did in uh, earlier life, uh, Michael, right? Like what we did is like there's no real stuff coming from the chip itself, but on on the switch box or a router box, uh, we had a, some kind of PDU, right? Like from the data center. Like so, what you can do is we can go to the Raritan PDU and see how much power it consumes, right? So then you have to subtract the steady state power to get that thing. So it is possible, and and I've at least done something like that. I can probably share with you, but it's not public. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, that sounds useful. Uh, who's that, Bruce? Yes. Yeah, something worth noting is that all network equipment is on the order of one tenth of all electronics energy use. Uh, all electronics are not internet connected, but an increasing fraction is so just that's a worth a point worth taking and, le and electronics are about 14 percent. well this was from eight years ago of all buildings energy use so there's roughly an order of magnitude from network equipment to electronics and roughly an order of magnitude from electronics to all electricity and buildings just for context and i've, I've been doing this for since the uh, late 90s energy use of electronics yeah yeah um, are, are the breakdowns, uh, are people aware of breakdowns of, sort of how the different components in data centers use the energy, for example? So I'm guessing that they're, they're some of the big, biggest consumers. Yeah, yeah, data centers are about 10% of all electronics as well. 
So, so uh, electronics not in data centers is about 10 times as much as electronics in data centers. Okay. Just for context. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, we, we obviously have more time for discussion later. Does anyone have anything else for Michael before we move on to the next uh, presentation? Yeah, it was, you, you said something and thank you for your presentation around the um, opportunity of, of, of less frequent signaling, let's say. And of course the experience from, from uh, the 5G development where, where signaling has been significantly less uh, frequent uh, and what it enables in terms of sleep mode is uh, something that is uh, worth considering, uh, I also think from for other uh, systems and so on. Uh, and then also in terms of standardization, you mentioned the, uh, so, so I'm active in ITU, uh, what, what, what kind of standards we, we would need. So I think for in terms of uh, specification, how to calculate the ICT footprint, there is a standard in place, which is quite detailed. But then of course, um, some studies look at ICT, some look at, uh, digital technologies, which is not so well defined. Some look at uh, internet and what, uh, how do we define internet? Is it from an end-to-end -end perspective? Is it from, from the sort of core? And what, what would be the system boundaries? And there, I think we have uh, much less in terms of standards in relation to assessments. So I don't know if you agree with that. Uh, agree with the fact that we don't have so many standards defining the internet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms, okay. in, in in relation to in relation to assessment specifically, or if you are aware uh, of anything that I'm. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not aware of anything. No. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, so thank you for all the questions. Uh, I think we should probably move on to the next uh, presentation, uh, which I, I think is is it Jens. Uh, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes. Uh, Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. So let me try to share my presentation. Share application. Okay. That seems to be. A window. Share. Do you see anything? Not yet. Hmm. I'm not share the screen. Doesn't. You don't see anything. Uh, I, I I don't see anything. No. Do you see the screen? Uh, I I am not seeing you sharing anything, but maybe that's just me. No, I see nothing. Ah. This is so, oh my God. Seems not working. Yori, I sent the presentation to you in PDF. Jens, Jens, I can also, we can also swap the order. Yeah, Daniel, yeah? please go. Okay, no worries. I don't know if I need to. And then you can, you have, you have a moment to sort out your slides. And then, um, and then you can present from your own screen. Okay. And, How does and that if, look? Not, if not, send the slides to Yari and me, and we we'll, we can share. Them. Yes, in case you are using double screens, that may be one reason. Yeah, no. that may be it. Yeah. Can you can you see the slides? Yes, I can see Daniel's. Slides. Can you see the presenter view or the the main view? No, we've got the main view. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, so my name is Daniel Sheen. I work at the University of Bristol in the UK and uh, present work um, that our group here has has carried out over the last 10 years or so, um, including uh, Professor Chris Priest, who I believe may or may not be in the audience, and uh, Paul Shabaji, and I've, I've seen his name uh, in the audience. But we work with um, many of you here, so this is um, it's really fantastic. Uh, to meet to meet the people we already work with and meet so many new fa uh, faces um, and names, um, and the uh, the email thread that we had going between the participants um, is already showing that this is a fantastic forum. Um, there's an enormous amount of knowledge uh, that has been exchanged already, and uh, yeah, and we look forward to hearing what you have to say uh, critically about the ideas. Um, that, that we're sharing. So in this talk, I am uh, coming from the perspective of uh, understanding the environmental footprint for digital services, for media services spe specifically. And, and we will see that this offers a, a, a slightly different lens um, to thinking about the carbon footprint of ICT and of networks specifically. And, and, I'm, and I'll be talking about the, the state of the art, so to say, and then we're proposing um, uh, uh, an addition to the current um, methods for for estimating the carbon footprint, um, and and in particular to that, um, I, I I look forward to 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 a discussion with you. Okay. Um, so what I what I often um, nowadays tend to start with is. Um, showing this uh, picture here, which categorizes the way that ICT in general is related to environmental impact. Um, it's a slightly busy um, diagram, but it really helps um, to, to, to focus uh, the conversation, to provide some terminology. Um, what we see here are two columns, um, with the red column describing all of the ways in which ICT uh, has a negative effect on the environmental impact and in the green a positive effect and um, and then horizontally there are three layers the first is the the direct layer and this is um, exclusively associated with what we call the direct impact of ICT um, meaning these are activities in the economy um, where where there's a real release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that is directly associated and measurable um, with the use of ICT. So, for example, from the production of, um, of silicon um, and uh, uh, from assembly, from transport, and then the use phase where we uh, burn, elect uh, where we consume electricity that is based on fossil fuel uh, combustion, and then the disposal phase. Um, and and this is um, this is what what our work in Bristol has mainly focused on, um, but increasingly um, we're we're also looking at um, positive effects and and how the two may or may not balance. Um, but but I think it it's useful to know uh, that the the, the the terminology and and I think in this in this uh, workshop here so far we're really focusing on the direct impact um, through those life cycle phases. And the electricity consumption is uh, mainly relevant as part of the use phase, although it is really, really important, um, more so than ever, to think about the uh, life cycle phases that precede the use phase, um, what we often call the embodied impact. Okay, so this is just some terminology. Um, in Bristol, um, I already said we're specifically focused um, on understanding digital services. Um, in 2011, we started to work with the Guardian newspaper, um, who at that time found themselves at a point of transition from paper to digital. And they had a very good understanding of the environmental impact of, of paper. And we worked with them to understand how that compares to reading the news online. And and then 2015, um, we worked with the BBC, um, another media service, trying to help them to understand how a move away from terrestrial broadcast um, to video on demand would affect 
the net environmental impact. We are computer scientists, but we we are basing our work on on uh, an environmental assessment methodology called life cycle assessment. And one of the key components here is to take into account um, uh, all of the life cycle phases. Now, uh, with the caveat that um, there's a there's a strong focus on use phase electricity consumption for various reasons, um, but in terms of the system that we want to take into account, um, we we try to be uh, inclusive um, and include data centers, networks, wired and cellular networks, and then the user devices. Um, and that's important in order to uh, to prevent burden shifting, for example, and to provide a, a, a complete and consistent um, understanding of the environmental impacts of, of media services. Great, here's an example of, of the um, of the process, um, such an assessment takes into account um, all of the uh, all of the processes that are involved, um, and and there can be many. Um, and and such an assessment usually starts with with creating such a map, and then for each of the boxes, identify how the underlying infrastructure um, consumes electricity in proportion to the service. And then there are some technical. Um, steps that, that are required when processes are uh, uh, consuming electricity or, or other environmental flow, environmentally relevant flow, um, uh, for, for more than one service. And then suddenly we need to start uh, talking about allocation. And that's a really important topic um, that, this, um, that, that, that I'm uh, going to spend more time talking about in a moment. Okay. Um, we also worked with um, an organization called Carnstone to construct a tool um, that is more self-service. So the work with the BBC and The Guardian earlier was very bespoke. And now we're living in an age where all media organizations or all organizations in the economy are concerned about their carbon footprint. And there's a big need to, uh, to carry out baseline assessments. Um, and then set targets for decarbonization. And for the media sector, the DIMPEC tool um, is, um, is probably the most popular at the moment with many organizations, many more than are listed here, using this tool to, to calculate the carbon emissions um, for their services. Um, there has been some uh, exchange of emails um, already around the carbon footprint of streaming. Um, I believe I'm, I'm very convinced that at the moment, the most robust um, that is out there is the one um, that is uh, based partly on the, on the DIMPEC model um, published in 2021 by the Carbon Trust. And um, Jens Malmedin, for example, he was uh, informing this as well, um, which, sorry, I move my, uh, my gallery here, um, which found that for, um, for a large global video on demand streaming service, the average footprint uh, per hour um, for, for the entire audience with a mix of different viewing devices is in the order of 55 gram per hour. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this is a, this is a useful data point um, and it, and it, uh, clears up with um, sadly sensational uh, values. Um, now we understand why um, the media picks up on on dramatic values, but um, as as has been pointed out, um, it's um, it's dangerous to go out with um, with wrong estimates. Um, now, an, a crucial element that is uh, worth spending more time um, talking about is the influence of decarbonization of the electricity mix. Um, uh, we can see here that um, very clearly, if we're just looking at the uh, the use phase, uh, which which is um, the the the, uh, the carbon intensity of electricity um, results in in a proportional uh, variation of the overall carbon footprint, of course. Um, but uh, that the, the decarbonization of the electricity will also result in a reduction of the embodied impact. So, so this is a, a one key lever um, that we need to take into account when we're thinking about initiatives 
um, to to reduce environmental impact. Okay, so um, so these are some results. Um, gives us um, a perspective, um, this service based perspective. <clears throat> I think it's useful for a variety of ways. Um, it is useful for the organizations providing those services to to think about footprint. So um, so the users of DIMPACT, um, of the DIMPACT tool, for example, they get this perspective for the entire audience, for the entire, uh, the entire service that they provide. And then they can set targets um, on these larger um, uh, uh, system boundaries. Um, but for a consumer, it's also relevant to put into perspective what is the footprint of a certain activity. If you're thinking about the footprint of, so here, for example, I'm in the UK, the carbon footprint per hour on average, um, so this would be a use of maybe 70% wow, televisions um, uh, and 20% and, and laptops and 10% other devices. Um, we've got a carbon footprint of, of, of less than 50 gram per hour um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a Guardian article um, uh, last year, I said, you need to compare this to um, to food, for example, and this is one hour of activity, um, and and a bowl of muesli alone has a footprint of 100 gram um, uh, of, of of carbon. So, it, I'm not saying that just because it's 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 small in the duration, maybe, um, or it, uh, it it's not worth thinking about, um, but that scale is is important. And and there was Colin was making the point that um, we need to. Uh, we should be spending some effort in thinking about what data we need. Um, the question of what data we need entirely depends on what we want to do. And what we want to do is the question of what is the political will um, or the, the maybe social political that is uh, of, of the society. And, and so this is, um, we need to take that into account. Um, but coming back to, to what we as a community of of, of engineers can do, I think the most important thing that we, the role that we have to play is provide data to the debate, to the consumers, to the organizations providing the services, to the legislators, or regulators, et cetera. And, and that data um, depends on, again, we start with this understanding of what the infrastructure looks like. Um, this is an old slide, but in principle, I think it's still representative of how networks work. You've got an electronic, routing layer and then you've got a, an optical transport layer underneath and um, and we need to take into account the efficiency um, of of sending data across the system um, with this understanding we can then produce estimates of um, of energy intensity and uh, when Jens sees this I know he will think oh what are they? this is too simple and of course um, I'm, I'm, I, I fully support that point and, and I'll provide something that is a bit more complicated and nuanced in a moment but that is the state of the art what we've got here and uh, a metric that um, I termed IV here for intensity um, of, of, of data volume and um, and multiplied with an amount of, of data transported over a network, um, we are producing a footprint. We are getting a number that is supposed to represent some sort of responsibility for, uh, for the energy consumption and hence carbon emission of the network uh, associated to this data volume. Yeah? So this is, this is um, the state of the art. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, what I've got here is this um, exponentially decreasing um, um, uh, line uh, uh, where how how uh, very consistently these um, average energy intensities for electricity um, have 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 um, have been produced over time. This is from a paper from 2018, which the current standard um, for service carbon assessments, the uh, greenhouse gas protocol ICT sector guidance um, uh, points to. Um, so this is this is um, very relevant. Um, and then on the one, and then on the other hand, um, we've got we've got data that is a bit broken down um, from from Lewis Cook, who is here in the audience as well. Um, so there. 
there are different approaches to these. Um, the numbers are um, slightly varying, um, but in, in, in sort of in the uh, order of magnitude, they're comparable. Um, the problem is that they're not very good to evaluate change. They're, they're, um, uh, and, and here's um, where Jens comes in. We first start with the observation that um, energy uh, consumption of networking equipment in particular, but of all other ICT devices as well, um, is, has low energy proportionality. Um, just for completeness, energy proportionality is defined as the degree to which the power consumption um, varies depending on utilization. Um, ideally, if a device is not used, we would like the power consumption to be zero. That would be perfect energy proportionality. Um, that is sadly not the case for energy device, uh, for network devices, energy baseline energy consumption. So the power consumption when the device is not used um, is in the order of 80%. There's some variation um, depending on what network device one looks at, but uh, for wired networking devices, um, I don't think that's heavily contested. Um, the upshot of that is that um, the energy consumption for the network is very insensitive to, to traffic. And um, I like to point to uh, this news article from GSMA. I've been criticized for it, but I think GSMA doesn't um, doesn't pick up on the irony of it. Um, so in the article, they are promoting um, uh, that uh, the networks, the network operators didn't see a change in the energy consumption um, of the networks um, despite an increase in traffic. Um, it, it means that the overheads in their network are so large um, that they didn't have to um, they didn't have to do anything to the networks to accommodate that extra traffic. And that means that before they were wasting a lot of electricity. Um, and the other consequence is that this formula cannot be used to evaluate um, changes to user behavior. Um, so there's an article here. Um, I think um, Kumi and Masane are criticizing this. Um, in the in the uh, jewel paper, um, if not, they they would have um, agreed with me. Where this is just one case of many, and I and our own work, we've uh, fallen victim of this um, uh, reductionist, uh, simplistic assumption about the, the the way that the networks work. Um, but here they're saying if we would turn off our video cameras in 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 calls we would be able to reduce the carbon footprint from 9.4 kilograms of CO2 per, per month um, to 377 grams. And uh, sadly, that is not the case. In particular, it won't result in an instantaneous energy consumption change in the network. Um, it does affect the power consumption of my laptop. Um, whenever I'm in the call, the fan just kicks in and I've got a new camera, which is just so bad in terms of uh, the overhead of power consumption that it induces in, in on the user device um, but the, the the immediate impact on the network um, is very small okay so i mentioned that um, uh, jens has contributed to this and i don't want to take all of your powder um, however what i want to point out is that um, the updated model um, that Jens provides, which factors, which which takes this uh, here, this exactly this observation that the power consumption, the total power consumption, is the sum of some base power consumption and then some factor, some dynamic portion that is proportional to use, um, and he and he just provides coefficients for this. Um, however, what we and and then multiply the base power consumption over time. Now that the, the problem with that is that it it um ignores a fundamental um the fundamental dynamic of how infrastructure is operated now i'm 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 uh not operating these systems myself but from conversations with good colleagues and and project partners i understand that infrastructure capacity is there to enable services and as it increases the organizations that provide the services, they are 
making use of this capacity and they are implementing better user quality, better user experience and users looking, are looking for this. They want to have HD video calls and they want to have 8K television probably. Um, and, and this has been going on as, far, as long as we are measuring the energy consumption and you know, the data volume in the internet and, um, and the, the, the volume of traffic in the network has very consistently doubled every two years. Um, and that drives the infrastructure capacity. Um, and this is just a given, it's extremely constant. Um, now, if we combine the two observations that capacity increases in order to meet demand, um, we know that there are these step changes here where the energy consumption in the network changes. Now, this is not to scale. And actually, as, um, as uh, Paul has pointed out today, so this is all hot off the press, um, the baseline power consumption here can actually go down as well. Um, but in practice, um, and this is again open for debate, um, the energy consumption um, of new kit, it, it, the, the capacity of the network increases. And if the total demand grows faster, then the energy efficiency improvements of the devices, there is no other way in the medium or long term that the energy consumption of the network is increasing. And this is what we're looking at at the moment. The energy efficiency improvement of the equipment at the moment is what we're thinking around in the order of 20 to 25%. But we know that the demand is increasing in the order of 50% per year. So um, just from looking from combining those two factors, it unless we're missing something, it's impossible that the power consumption of the network will remain constant. Yeah. Now, um, so this um, this is uh, so, but we are not representing this mechanism in the way that we're thinking about energy intensity. This blue line here shows us this. Um, IV, this energy intensity of data transport. This is what we're using in order to cal calculate those footprints where we're saying your use of the network is responsible. We are, we're assigning to you responsibility for a part of the electricity consumption. Um, and we're, we don't care what time of the day or the year or when you're using this. Um, but really, we have just said that the um, it's the 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 peak. It's it's the it's the it's the uh, it's it's when we're coming close to the use of the um, capacity of the network that really drives the increase of the um, or the, the 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 change of the of the network. And so um, we argue that actually it is it is more representative of what is happening causally. Um, uh, to burden traffic that uses the, the system at peak time. Um, and, and that's exactly what we're proposing. We're proposing a transformation of the energy intensity factor that takes, um, takes into account the degree to which a service contributes to peak demand. And, um, and here, so there are many different ways how to do this. The version that we present here is um, just taking into account the regular diurnal pattern that we observe. Um, this is from the from the London Internet Exchange, but similar patterns uh, can be found across the planet. Um, and and we take this and we are moving just the base power consumption and shifting it towards peak and um, and uh, and and there's a, thus a penalty um, for traffic um, the closer that it comes um, to peak time use. Okay. That's the proposition here. Um, here's the formula for it. Um, and um, we've seen this before. And then the next step on top of this is the observation that carbon intensity of the electricity is also variable. And, um, and now if we are uh, combining the two, we, are, um, we come to an even 
um, more pronounced difference um, uh, of carbon intensity <clears throat> over the course of the day. Um, again, there are lots of nuances in here that can be um, that can that we can talk about. I really look forward to the discussion. Um, but uh, just just want to close with 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 two observations. Um, we start in this with, with when we present this uh, metric. We start with the observation of a causal relationship here, <clears throat> where we said that uh, traffic that contributes to um, to 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 uh, to the use of the network um, close to, uh, to uh, with the effect that the capacity increases are necessary. Um, that we we start with this causal. Um, observation, but we end up with a metric that has a normative effect because it incentivizes the users as well as the providers of services to think about ways to carry out demand smoothing, shifting traffic away from the peaks towards periods um, that are less heavily penalized um, and, and so resulting in a manifest um, reduction of of peak demand, and so we can delay the need for increasing network capacity, which is a good thing. Okay, that is it. Thank you very much. Oh. All right. Th thank you very much, Daniel. Interesting talk. Um, do people have questions for Daniel? We have, a, we have some time. I see a bunch of discussion in the chat, aren't we? Um. Colin, I need to drop for another meeting, but I was going to make a quick comment. I think it sort of breaks to what I said in the chat here is that looking at some of the, sort of the power graphs that were shown earlier, it may be that uh, what's in the ITF's core competency in terms of routing protocols in the core network and things like that would have very little impact on the overall internet usage if a lot of the power is being consumed on the edge of devices and in the home. So I still think it's, it's clear that we need to understand or have good data for exactly where this power is being used to make sure that when we try and optimize uh, anything we do here, that it, we get a good bang, good, uh, good value in terms of the optimizations we make. Because uh, you could optimize the core routing and find that you actually make like 1% uh, less overall difference. So we need to make sure we focus our energy in the right places. Yeah, yeah that, that is certainly, certainly a, an interesting point to discuss, uh, that the, uh, the energy proportionality uh, data makes it, so some of this clear that uh, there's only so much scope we can uh, change by changing the protocols, I think. Uh, Panella. Yeah, just a small question. So, so regarding your step graph, uh, Dan, uh, to me, it seems like the X axis would rather be load than time because time would make some assumptions on the development of, of the efficiency and so on implicitly. So, am I missing something or, or do, do you think that makes sense? Uh, yeah, you, you can't directly swap the tool um, because, um, because load is. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Th I think I think that's that that wouldn't quite work because of the low energy proportionality. I think the steps, um, I'm I, yeah. So, so, so that, just to clarify the questions, to me it seems like the steps are more related to the growth of the load. So at at some point you 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 pass a threshold, than to time as such. But because time in this case would more be a representation of the load, uh, but maybe I okay. missed something. But no, that, no, no. that was That's, my way of thinking. Yes, yes. Sorry, I, I totally agree with that. Um, that that it is um, ultimately your your interest. You're, you're not time isn't isn't so important. I think the two are related. Yeah, because we've got that two um, x uh, increase in demand over time so 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 certainly the two are related but ultimately um the main thing that you're concerned with is um is 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 load yeah i do i do agree with that okay then i understand thanks uh dom did you have a question yeah hi folks i've done uh, excellent presentation of course um and i love i love the now christian step graph that's a fantastic uh, way to visualize the upgrade path um Question for you on that. Um, do you, did you include uh, sort of application layer um, services like CDN in there, or is that is is this 
tight already to specific network uh, infrastructure uh, or have you got cloud services application layer stuff in, in so factored into any particular workflow represented there so um this is purely conceptual i think the principles apply to 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 cdn boxes or or to others other equipment um we did model this um the the, the demand curve comes from the london internet exchange uh from a typical workday um and and so so this is sort of uh, real data, um, but the rest is is just proportions. Um, I think there's there's more work to be done to to look at um, how this would plan uh, play out with uh, server equipment. That it is they're they're now more energy proportional. We're, we're talking maybe forty percent uh, base power consumption rather than eighty percent. The principle is the same. Yeah. Now your the your the gains in terms of the the, the penalty uh, for for peak usage they would they would uh, be smaller. Yeah. Cool. Great. Don't let them back in. They just like demanded going outside. Sorry, was that the question? Not sure. Okay, uh, so I think we should maybe move on to um, Jen's uh, presentation. Uh, do you, do you have your? Uh, do you know if the shut the slide sharing is working now? Or? Uh, it doesn't seem to work. Okay, uh, I can try and share it from here. And yeah, uh, so I sounded you the slide, so I can. Yeah, let me see what I've got. Yeah. Uh, there was some kind of uh, setting. I'm more, I have switched from PC to Apple, and there was some kind of privacy setting. Uh, teams work. I have only done Teams so far, so it, it then sharing works. But yeah, these uh, appear that uh, there was some a kind little of... uh, erratic. There we are. Just find the right window to share. Yeah. Oh, huh. yeah, we're seeing it now. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure I can uh, get easily get rid of the thumbnails on the side, but that is maybe enough. No, maybe you can just take it. If you can see all, then it's fine by me. So, uh, short presentation now from me, Jens Mamdin Eriksson. Uh, we talked a lot about the internet or the ICT sector, and uh, the title I wrote here was "Internet consumes less energy and emits less carbon than what many think." And this goes along with what was said in the first presentation. Uh, and then unfortunately, you can find other information about the internet, on the internet. So you can go to the next slide. Just some e examples from uh, BBC Guardian. So usually they talk about uh, internet emitting more carbon than the aviation sector. Streaming media, video is especially consuming a lot of energy. Uh, the sector grows fast, emissions, energy, and so on. And I, I say, no, that's not the case. That's uh, all false. And if we start, if we go to the slide number three there. So this is the kind of comparison I would like to make. Uh, if we take the aviation sector. Uh, so this is results from uh, another Swedish uh, researcher about the aviation sector. So in 2019, about 4% of global GHG. And as you can see to the left there, so it's not only CO2, we have also other emissions and effects, especially the high altitude effects, methane, NOx, and so on. And then we need to produce the jet fuel. And we should also look into, okay, what, what does it take to construct all the airports and aircraft and so on? Uh, unfortunately, nobody has done that uh, research, but uh, I think it's pretty large. Anyway, if we look at the ICT sector and the typical split and definition I use, you have the data centers, you have the networks, and data centers and networks, then it's the operation that's most important. They are on 24-7 all year round. Uh, and, but as you can see here, it's all the devices, so all the phones, smartphones, PCs, and so on, 
Uh, not to forget the home routers, the CPE we all have with fixed broadband. And then, since these devices are not on all the time, just a few hours every day uh, on average, then the uh, production of these devices actually has is nearly as much as the operation. But if we add all this up, we only get to around 700 million tons. Uh, and I will show you how you <laughs> arrive at such a number. So I've been doing these studies now since the first study we did was back in 2005, so more than 15 years ago. Uh, and then if we look at the aviation sector, we actually see that it's only 1% of all people. They do about half of all flying and only slightly more than 10% fly a given year. So 1% of, of all people, their air travel is actually emit more CO2 than the entire ICT sector, which is used by, I guess we can say, around 5 billion people daily for hours. So let's go to the next slide. I, this is how we, this is ongoing research, but we have done studies uh, a couple of times now since 2005 about the ICT sector. You have the embodied footprint for data set and networks and user devices and the operation on top there. Uh, and when it comes to how to measure uh, these parts, I think we need to go to all the companies. And today, the good story is that most companies actually report their electricity consumption and their emissions and so on. So for data centers, we have data from 40 seconds. 46 large companies, whether it's Google, Microsoft, and all the others, uh, about 60% of the operation of data centers. Uh, but these companies actually represent more than 90% of all data traffic. For network operators, 67 large operators, 80% of all the subscriptions in the world. But then we need to add an estimate for the enterprise networks, offices, malls, airports, and so on. For the embodied part, we have done a separate study where we used data from 59 large manufacturers. So we have a lot of data and then with such large data covering samples, it's, you can accurately extrapolate to the total. So if you go to the next slide, uh, we have the total there for the ICT sector, so about 700 million ton. And we also do the same kind of assessment for closely related sectors. So we have the ENM sector, the entertainment and media. And today it's mainly made up of TVs, the, the any consumption of TVs and set top boxes. And TV networks are just small in, 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 in all this. And then other consumer electronics have gone from being quite many camera stereos and so on. But today, it's uh, most of that function is within smartphones, and we don't buy those products anymore. So that has actually had a reducing impact on the total footprint. Paper media, uh, and then you have some new cameras, uh, cryptocurrency, security cameras, and so on. But still, rather small. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So if we look back to 2010 and compare to this new 2020 study, we see actually a total reduction uh, based on, it's actually less TVs and TV pieces and TV sold 2020 compared to 2010, 2011. Uh, we have the smartphone impact. I mentioned uh, a lot of, Functions you need the dedicated devices to before as cameras are now included in a smartphone. Uh, for PCs, we mainly use laptops, smaller, much, much more energy efficient than old desktops. We watch TV less, and today's TVs are actually a lot more energy efficient, even though they are larger. And then, as I said, paper media reduced by about 30% since uh, before 2010. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Maybe I shouldn't go so much into details, but this is kind of how we go about these data. This is an example 
of measured electricity consumption by these companies that run data centers. You have the you have the Google, Microsoft, Facebook, all reporting good data. Amazon, we still have to estimate them, but that they are reporting now uh, their whole organization. But then they have one and a half million employees for retail and warehousing and other businesses. So AVS is probably the largest electricity consumer. We don't know exactly how large it is, but I think that estimate is pretty good. Uh, and as you can see, the last decade, number of new servers in the world has been very stable outside China, but then China has uh, built out their data center capacity. So most of the increases in China, uh, you can step to networks, same for networks. And here we, I can point to this interesting studies. We have followed European operators for 10 years. And there we have seen that the electricity consumption is more or less exactly the same. Very stable during the last 10 years. Uh, if we look to data traffic, it has increased by 20, around 20 times. Uh, so we don't see any relation, data, energy. So more capacity, but it's the same electricity consumption. Uh, yeah, we can step to the, go to the next one. For the manufacturing, there we see in, to manufacture semiconductors and displays is really important. Uh, and then you have a, large assembly companies like Foxconn there, to, Foxconn there too. And this is a study we have submitted. It's under review. And I think it is very interesting for everyone that has done life cycle assessment on ICT devices like PCs and smartphones. So we have based on 20, new 2020 data. So we have done an allocation for each device that that, uh, that uh, can be used. Uh, okay, a little bit, we can go to the next slide. If we look on results for data centers and networks over time, this is what we have seen. Uh, for data centers, our results is very similar to what Kumi and Masonet in the US has uh, published over the years. Uh, not a surprise, we're using the same kind of model. What we are adding here is also this uh, data center company data that kind of verifies uh, what Coombe and Masanet has done over the years. Data centers, 2020, 0.9% of global electricity. Networks, a little bit more, has grown, was similar to data centers. It's now larger. We basically... <coughs> because we built out networks all around the world. And if you step one, take it one further, if we look at networks and then look at number of subscriptions in the network, we see, yeah, the network electricity, the built out of networks, very proportional to number of subscriptions. It's actually so that it's three times as much subscriptions, but energy has increased by about two times. So. We are a bit more efficient per user. But then as you can see, data from 2005 went up 100 times. What can we expect to 2030? Maybe 10 times, I think maybe eight times, like three doubling according to Moore's law, a little bit slower. It's moving a little bit slower today. Uh, and then we can go to the next slide. So if we reconnect to, um, to uh, what's been said in media, and where does these figures come from? Uh, so there's many other studies out there doing, uh, and, and when you look at them, it pretty much looks like this, that it is assumed that energy goes up as data goes up. And then you will see this exponential increase, projections in the future. However, if you, if you step to the next slide, 
I say this, this is based on a wrong as assumption that exponential increase in data leads to an exponential increase of energy. And according to all the measurements we have done over this past 10 years, uh, that is not the case. So typically you change one piece of equipment to a new piece of equipment that typically can do 10 times more data, but often it's really to a lower energy consumption. So it improved further, which the network kind of um, uh, data tells us. And then, yes, that was it. Unfortunately, I have some interesting slides I could have shown you about when you take the figures down to per subscription, which I think is, is what we need to do. Uh, but I can show them on a later state. To sum it all up, so in contrast then to what can be seen in media, the ICT sector's carbon footprint is stable. It is not growing. Uh, and 1% of all people on earth emit more when flying. Uh, compared to 60% of people using ICT daily for hours. And the entertainment and media sector, TVs, other consumer electronics and paper media, has actually been reduced by 30% or 30% lower emissions versus 10 years ago. Uh, and the ICT sector, the data center companies and many of the operators are the leading investors now in renewable electricity in the world. Uh, there's a study by International Energy Agency that shows this. And we also see this in the data. Uh, I didn't mention that, but you still saw all these green figures about electricity consumption <coughs> in, the, in the background data. And that was renewable electricity. So some of these companies have already switched 100% to renewables, building their own solar farms and wind farms. A very, very important, more data in the future do not mean more energy. So uh, we can keep on surfing the web, stream music and video, and downloading games and play for fun. It will not consume more energy, probably less energy. Uh, one of the slides I had as background, if time uh, allowed me to, but I can just mention that, that my new fiber connection that I dig down this summer, the connection consumes around 2.5 watts uh, at the fixed ne network site. Uh, in my old house, the phone line and ADS cell consume 10 watts total 10 megabit per second. Now I have 1000 gigabit megabit per second. So I have 100 times more data, but only it's four times less energy. Uh, the, route, the home router and fiber modem consume 12 watts. Uh, back in the days, you need the modem and the router consumed 18 watts. And, and then you had the core, so-called cordless phone. Nobody has like phones anymore, fixed phones. And that consumes another few watts. So nearly half the consumption for, for my CP part. But 100 times more data. And in the future, who knows, maybe in 10 years, uh, we can all get 10 gigabit per second. What to do with all this data? I have no idea. It will not cost more energy. That is one thing I know. Uh, OK, thanks for me. Sorry about the slide. I thought this was going like raining water, uh, but uh, apparently WebEx and Apple don't talk to each other as good as. I think no matter how much data we have, the technology is always going to uh, defeat us at some point. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, some interesting data, some interesting perspectives. Uh, I, I'm sure someone has uh, some questions and some comments. 
Go ahead, Daniel. Well, thank you very much, Jens. Um, I will I will open the stage with a uh, slightly provocative point. You were saying that um, we should uh, we should not worry and keep on consuming because your projections say the energy consumption will remain the same. Um, if the rest of the economy does deliver and aggressively decarbonize, um, the ICT sector will look very bad if we don't follow. Yeah, but, but I, I, I'm very, well, I mean, looking to what is happening now, I think the in a few years, the data center companies and the network companies will probably be the ones that has switched to renewable electricity faster than any other sector can do. Uh, for data centers, it's, it's relatively easy. They are not spread around, already located in countries like Sweden uh, with access to renewable electricity. For networks, it's a bit harder, especially if you're if you are in a country where there's little access to renewable electricity. But that, hey, look at India, they have more than 100,000 sites with renewable electricity on-site production. Um, so I'm not worried. And then I would, I would challenge you a bit there when you say that when you install new things the, and it goes up. What, we actually saw the opposite in Europe in 20, when, when data went up, they had to actually modernize, but what they had to do was take out the oldest equipment that couldn't cope with the data traffic. And when they installed new equipment, it consumed less. So we actually saw it, they, they went the opposite direction. Much more data, but then the energy started actually to go down a little bit. So, so I don't want to hijack the entire conversation, but I think this is another point um, that needs uh, drilling into. Um, uh, I I totally get the point that if you retire legacy equipment, you can um, realize substantial savings. Um, but if you're if you're just looking at the the trend data, and uh, I think there's little um, the, the the assumption that the equipment only improves energy efficiency with those twenty to twenty five percent on average, um, but the demand for data for capacity increases by 50%, um, you just can't combine those two, those two trends um, to end up with something that remains the same. But what, how do you mean? I mean, more, more, basically we're starting from, we're still on a very low level, right? Yeah, so you do provide an empirical perspective, you say we are we have um, we've got data reaching back twenty years, and that data shows that despite those enormous increases, exponential increases in data volume, energy consumption remains stable. Mm. And I, I I take that that point. Um, the question is, um, are we nearing the and 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 underneath? I know when we walk through the data center in Stockholm, you you, sh you showed me rows of PSTN equipment that has turned has been turned off. The question is, if there's enough legacy still there, enough margin, fat margin that can be trimmed to keep us on that trajectory for longer, <clears throat> or if or if we are seeing the end of that. That's the question. And and so I, think, yeah. I think to begin with, I would say that energy is only proportional to number of human users. That that is what it is. And not not their usage, but actually nodes, the connection points. So, uh, I mean, the the fiber connection I got this summer. Uh, it's a little piece of equipment that you put in a port. Uh, consumes a watt, and then the uh, then it's like another watt, so two watts. Uh, when I started to work, or maybe a few years before, then you would need, then you had the same capacity going from one big city to another. And you would need a, a whole room full of equipment consuming several kilowatts. It had, my fiber now has the same capacity. 
but it only consumed like a 0.01% of the and uh, I'm, I'm only using like 1% or below 1% on average of the capacity. Uh, so there's no, the only way to sort of, and this, I mean, the, sure, we can have sleep modes and, and try that and so on. But uh, in the end, it's, it's, uh, it's only a few watts that can be saved per user. And even if, if I use 10 times more data, it wouldn't changed the wattage of my connection or my router and so on. It will, uh, when, when I load my router with uh, 500 megabit per second, it goes up 0.3 watts if I'm on a LAN port. If I own the Wi-Fi, it can go, go up with more than a watt. Uh, so yeah, uh, th th there are clearly other factors in whom uh, energy usage, which are affecting this, um, you know, the Wi-Fi, the PC that's attached to it, and, and so on. But yeah, um, uh, I, I see there there are other uh, questions uh, in the chat. I see Dom has his hand up to ask a question as well. Uh, thanks, Colin. Yeah, um, uh, uh, really interesting presentation. I'm, I'm particularly enthralled by the takedown of the aviation uh, measurements. That was really. Um, engaging because i've been I, i've been at fault with just i think using that comparison without fact checking it and that seemed like a fairly robust fact checking so i thank you for that um with the with respect to your um the the, the um your views about the network scaling up in terms of usage but the energy consumption essentially staying flat or even potentially reducing um do your measures include um uh, it's almost the same question I asked Dan. Do they include CDNs? Is there any thought that actually a lot of the energy use might be staying flat on the networks because of the traffic, the heavy duty traffic has been offloaded to CDNs, which are outside of your measurement scope? Because it's, I, I work with a lot of CDNs in Green News Streaming and we are only just at the beginning of measuring these things in any practical terms. So it's 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 it, it, it's important we get you that data, but if you've got other sources of that data, I'm intrigued because I see it only see CDN energy bills going up. Yeah, I mean, uh, our company, we have our own little media company that have mm -hmm. those streaming. Uh, and then typically what you, you would you be using like uh, Amazon's big network and connect to. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, you mentioned the work we did with Carbon Trust and Netflix and others. And in that work, the, there is a, a quantification of the, their entire work, network, including all the CDN and so on. And that part was rather small compared to the rest. And in our data, we have big big players, all the big yeah, CDN players are there, like Lumen, and uh, we have others uh, adding all the parts. Um, you have Amazon, the others one. Uh, we actually ask our providers of data for the data, so to speak, and get it. I cannot share it, unfortunately, of course, <laughs> but no, sure. uh, I think that when it comes to networks, it's the last mile that always has been the number one thing. And as soon it's like, as soon as, I mean, I sit in a cabinet with around hundred others, and on the back side, it's what it's one ten gigabit port out, which we all share, and have a hard time to fill it, and it consumes nothing compared to all the access that has to go out to to everyone else. Uh, so I'm not so worried about the core network. I, I also know we we did some we did measurements of one of the Atlantic cables and saw that yeah very small consumption comparing to the rest. Uh, I'd I'd like to volunteer some data in the spring to you <laughs> to add yeah. to the data sets. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll connect with mine. But that would certainly be interesting. Uh, I see some discussion in the chat. Uh, I was going to just about to call on Eve, who's just stuck her hand up, and then uh, Lu Louise, do you want to jump in after Eve as well, maybe? Hi, 
Okay, great talk. Thank you so much. It's so thought provoking. It's very perplexing, of course, why the numbers stay the same. And so that's really the gist of my question is um, you've done this amazing analysis for so long. I've read so many of your publications. It's great to hear this talk. I would love to understand more of the why and I, um, you know, why the numbers remain the same. And it, it sounds like there are some things behind the scenes, uh, including understanding this definition of what do we include in the internet, um, and even trying to understand, you know, if we understood the factors for why things are remaining the same, could we under, do we also understand the percentage of the impact that they're having for why things remain the same? Um, so, you know, Dom talked about CDNs, uh, the previous talk, uh, you know, Dan's talk was about, um, you know, uh, the the load on the network. Um, and so I wonder if you have sort of a catalog of all the things that are sort of working in tandem to offset the, the data growth. Um, and if we understood that better, or, I mean, maybe you understand that because it's all in your head. <laughs> but here, I would love to hear your, your thoughts on that. I, I would. First, I, I would switch around the data that, okay, there's more data. I would say what happens first is that we make a technology improvement and we always had this Moore's law. Uh, it's, it's not the law, it's like, it's an observation and it's still going on, maybe not as fast. And you can argue if it's still, but even though it's, it's, it slows down in some areas, then we take up on other areas. And, and over time, if I look at like my the the, the laptop I'm I'm using right now, it consumes less than less than ten watts, and it's about I checked to when I was starting at school. It's like hundred times every each parameter is like hundred times more mm -hmm. uh, storage, memory, speed, everything, data, and so on. But it's only one tenth of the weight and one tenth of, of the energy. And actually, everyone can see this, but the same thing happens in the data centers network. It's the same semiconductors that, that is the basis for all this. And, and you, you, you see the same. I mean, it, like the example, the, back in the 80s, you need the whole room doing the same thing that my little port can do now uh, that I connect to my fiber. Uh, another example for mobile, it's like when I started, you needed, we had this huge cabinets, 500 kilos for GSM, uh, one base station. And we were thinking it would be good if we could make it much smaller so we can put it up in antenna uh, to avoid this uh, half of the energy got lost in the cables up between the, but today, since a few years ago, the radios are like, now a 40 kilo radio does, does three times the work that this 500 kilo did uh, when I started. But much higher capacity, of course, in terms of data and so on. It's not comparable. It's just, uh, it's like a million times, uh, really. So it sounds like um, your assessment is that just the, the sheer improvements that are happening in the technology have, have allowed us to continue along this path. Yeah, I, f I was, yeah, I forgot to say that, that first comes the technology that allow more data and then we have more data. If the technology all of a sudden stop allowing of this, there will not be exponential more data because that would then start to cost exponentially more and the things would get exponentially larger because of exponential more energy consumption, which is physically impossible. If we really want that, yeah, who would, would pay the cost? I don't think anyone would do it. But the data amount then would be such high that we would probably say, yeah, hey, it's all right. We don't have enough data already. Hmm. Uh, if, if, if air travel had improved as much as uh, electronics, the time I have been living, we would be traveling at the speed of light. 
one million times faster, one billion kilometers an hour at the speed of light. Okay, it's a phenomenal improvement. But that you can of course say that yeah, it's still you still have this one PC. You're only writing documents. Uh, so, yeah, in a way, sure. So, so I'm, I'm I'm conscious uh, conscious of time that we we have other things to discuss. Um, I, I saw L Louise um, had some questions, some some comments in the chat. Is there anything you want to say at the microphone, Louise? Or? Uh yeah. I mean, I'm just. I think maybe we should have some discussions offline. Um, if I could share some of the stuff we actually see what's happening in the networks and how things are changing and why things are changing. Um, I'd also like to maybe uh, dig into your um, uh, assumptions about embodied energy um, versus in use energy. Because again, I think what we're seeing within our network are, are somewhat different to, to what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it could well just be perspectives, you know, you're looking at the global taking into, which takes into account the sort of socioeconomic stuff that goes on as well as just what's happening in, in one country and one network. But um, in the interest of time, I think we'll just move along. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that was, that was very, very useful. Thank you. And, and yes, I, I think if, if we can make some connections, then I think that would, that would be helpful. And uh, to, to dig more into the, the, the details here. All right, is this working? Okay, so um, what I, I would like to try and do to, to finish up is dig, dig a little into, um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time talking about what we know. Um, what, what are the things we don't know? Uh, what, what are the things where we, um, yeah, what, what are the areas where, where we know our expertise is is, is not sufficient? Um, what, what are the areas where we know we need more, more data? Uh, and I, I sort of asked this question uh, on, on the on the mailing list ahead of time, and I, I've sort of put prompts for a number of the, the, the email threads I saw. Um, does and, and anyone have uh, opinions on this? What, 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 what don't we know? What are the known unknowns? Mm -hmm. That uh, yeah, Yari, you, you asked about the um, for what, what and where is the traffic and the trade off. Do you want to say a little about that, maybe, to get things going? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I was just approaching this as, as sort of an yeah, co coming into this as as non expert. So if we want to make an improvement, I, I do think that we actually do make need to make an improvement, even if. Uh, um, even if the energy levels are more or less the same, that means that, that we could save some, some energy or be otherwise more efficient or use less money um, in various enterprises. Um, energy is very costly uh, recently, if you've not noticed. So I think we do need to make improvements and it, it's worthwhile for, for us to make improvements. But, but in order to do that, we have to figure out like, like where, where is it cost effective to make improvements? and. Like starting from like, you know, n not from who is guilty, but like where is like what is the proportion of um, environmental impacts coming from this part or that part, and and so on. So, and, and I guess we you know we we saw some of those numbers today. Um, another thing that I, it would be very useful to understand, and I think that data also exists, um, at, at least to some extent, um, like which part of the traffic is responsible for what. And I guess, uh, I don't know, video on the internet is, video and streaming is, is, a, is a huge fraction of that. And, and then we could perhaps try and understand, like, you know, what, what are, out of these things are, are the worthwhile things to do? I mean, maybe the answer is that, you know, just keep optimizing um, streaming and, and video and, and compression and all of that. And then that's, that, that's the, that, that's the most useful thing we could do and everything else is noise. I'm not sure that's entirely true, but, um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that, um, I, I guess, um, uh, again, this talk will sort of rely on, on, on the improvements that have been going on in, in equipment and it didn't come for free because it basically meant that lots of engineers and lots of standardizing people got together and designed new stuff and new generations and so on. And um, chip manufacturers came up with better processes and so on. So 
a lot of effort has has went in, into that. So, um, in order for us to do something, I, I think we need to figure out again what what the right place is for us to do that. And um, and also um, typically, and and you see this in in some of the papers that that, that we have, or basically all of the papers that you know, we propose to do X, but X may have some trade offs or costs and. We actually want to understand that too, and not just like you know this this thing here today is costly. We propose an improvement. We actually have to understand what that implies. Also, you know maybe you can reduce the cost of your box or the energy cost of your box, but what about other boxes in the network? Does that imply something for them? So those sort of sort of questions were on my mind at least. Yeah, thank you. Uh, does anyone have uh, opinions on these questions? Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, um, Gary. Like, I think that's a really good point. But um, one more thing I kind of wanted to talk about is like, you know, we are like in the IDF, IAB sphere, right? Like, and we know a lot about networks, so we're spending a lot of uh, time looking at how the networks are, right? Like, you know, utilizing energy and so on. I think we have a big blind spot on the end user devices, like, you know, how, how they are and the applications themselves, right? And, and um, this is something I started looking at like probably like a few months ago, right? And there's like a huge variability in, in how energy is consumed on the devices. So we talk about like video streaming or, or like video calls, right? Like, so there's a huge difference in energy between let's say a WebEx call and a Zoom call, right? Or a Teams call, right? And how efficiently the clients have written, the applications have written. And there's a big difference if I use my Mac's built-in webcam versus like a Logitech cam that's got H.264. So I think we don't have a really good grip on this. So we're kind of putting this all in the same bucket. And um, I, I don't know the good answer to this, but I think this is something we need to look at, like uh, for sure. I think like Jens' point, I was like, oh, like whatever we do, it's gonna stay the same. But we assume that things are gonna get improving on the consumer side, right, on the edge device side. But I think, um, that's something that needs to get vetted because, and, and we're not doing this because it's a very hard problem. So there's a lot more measurement points, and there are like a lot more variations in the measure, in, in the points themselves. And I just want to throw this up. I don't have a solution. I, I just want to see like you know how we kind of address this uh, going forward. Yeah, I mean it's certainly clear that each, you know, irrespective of how much data, it, you know, how much uh, energy it costs to transmit a bit, there are costs in producing the bits and. The, and they, they vary significantly depending on what those bits are and how they, they're generated. I mean, as the <coughs> sorry, as the networks are now, it's it's they are consuming this more or less the same all the time. Uh, usually, we are on a low low part of the the we're using just a few percent. But still, it's consuming. So, uh, one thing is that, yeah, please use it more now. Uh, make make more use of it. <laughs> uh, and what we're doing right now is, is that, actually, that. Yeah. It's it's been it's very hard work to keep that profile, and usage will make that much harder to keep when we were trying to reduce it. Um, oh, it it is a struggle, and uh, we can see what happening now and uh, we can also see that when we've completed some actions you can only do once and, and you can see that behind that there we're basically we're trying to reduce stuff at the same time as other stuff is growing fast and so as a business we're, we're keeping it in a balance and I suspect that's what's going on in certainly a number of the other the comms so if you, if you just keep throwing data at it particularly at peak time it could get worse very fast but, but data comes uh grows when we allow it to grow and install new, better. Yeah, there's a socioeconomic aspect angle yeah. to it as well, yes. Uh, what, I, what I was going to say is that, I mean, when we uh, have this online meeting, if we compare the, the energy for this, it's insignificant compared to if we would have traveled, I mean, to the meeting, right? Oh, yes, there's, there's, there are yeah. benefits. And, and I measured, I mean, I have a measurement device all the time on my PC, and it goes up with about around four watts when I have a Teams conference. I don't know about WebEx. I have to unplug my PC, so it, it's not measuring it right now. Uh, so it's up 10%, so from 40 to 44 watts, the laptop and the screen. 
and camera and everything. So it's not that much. And uh, when I watch YouTube, I, it's there's no increase in energy. It's the same, 40 watts, like doing a ordinary office work. Uh, it, 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 the, the, the comment about uh, understanding the, the socio-technical, the socio-economic drivers here is, is important though, because uh, obviously this affects you know the number of users using the network and the number of devices that, that they have and that are, that, are being, that are being pulled in. So yeah, uh, Penella, sorry. Uh, Okay, yeah, I was just trying to listen and at the same time reading in the chat and I think it feels like we are discussing a couple of things at the same time. So one is about what is the footprint of ICT and I think when we, and especially when Jens are talking and says that it's much smaller uh, than it is it, it, and, and it's not likely to develop in line with some of these uh, more alarmistic uh, um, uh, scenarios. That is about understanding where we are and I think it's important to, to try to get a, a good assessment of that. Then when it comes to comparing with other activities as aviation, someone said in the chat is not important. I think it's very important because not for us as the ICT industry, because we have to look at our thing within our system boundaries, but it's also important for society to have knowledge to understand which activities are the most uh, harming ones and which are less resource intensive. And then there is, I, I, I mean, it, it's a great difference if a person is using their smartphone or if they are going on a, uh, um, um, a cross-Atlantic uh, aviation trip, for instance. Uh, so, so it's important to understand those things. But uh, that, that said, I think, of course, as a sector, we have the responsibility for our emissions. So although we need to have a, a reasonable estimate of them and could say that some seem very alarmistic, that doesn't take away the importance of optimizing and reducing the emissions which and the energy usage which is associated with our sector. And from the perspective of uh, electricity, uh, hopefully going renewable and renewable is important. It is the main strategy for decarbonization and we are a demand side player. Uh, even if we, we do that, of course, el electricity will still be uh, important for a lot of different reasons, but it's also important from the perspective that, uh, I mean, also the, the renewable resources, they are not endless. So, so we have to keep down our electricity consumption as much as possible so we don't waste that energy. So I think there are there are a lot of reasons to, to, to look within our own boundaries. So I think these are two different discussions. What, 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 how large are we? Uh, but we, that should not be confused with uh, discussions whether or not to, to, to reduce our emissions because that we must do. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we only have a few minutes left um, to, to, to finish up. Um, f firstly, a uh, couple of minutes on what, what are we missing? What, what, what are the areas where people think we're missing something fundamental? What are, what are the risks and concerns? Colin, it's Marisol Palmero here. I, I just wanted to uh, make a note, right? As I have not seen, um, probably I have been missing it as well, but uh, um, I have not seen uh, the, the point being raised and it is something that we don't know yet and uh, it's coming in our way for ICT uh, categorization under the European Commission. We are, uh, uh, there is a conversation on going for a digital plate passport and the digital plate passport will um, affect uh, any product that any vendor might uh, put uh, outside, right? And uh, it will consider uh, not only how that product has been built, something that the uh, uh, manufacturing should be labeling in one way or another, but as well uh, the life cycle of the products, right? The uh, all that is related to a scope free to the use of, of the products um, that uh, should be updated. Uh, I would, I'm not sure if real time or not, I still <laughs> things needs to be defined, but something I, I guess this community can help uh, to 
uh, provide uh, more inside information to the European Commission and any governmental uh, uh, organization, right, as, as this will be uh, imposed by uh, countries. I, that's my understanding. But I think yeah, yeah. it is something that we should be looking at as well, how to influence them there. Uh, yeah, it's it's not an area I know a whole lot about, but I, I agree. It sounds like something we should be uh, thinking about. Um, can, can you maybe send something to the to the list with some uh, more more ideas and more information? Sure, I, I will. Okay, thank you. And, and if anyone has any any other inputs on that, it would be useful. Okay, any other risks and concerns people want to raise? In that case, uh, yes, Daniel, sorry. Um, <clears throat> coming back to, to the initial point, Colin, you made um, about uh, demands for more data um, that we'd like to have. Uh, they may be less constructive to the dialogue than demands for the data we need. So asking for justification why we need uh, certain data. I think it's implicit here in your comment. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to say that um, at the moment, so I believe that if there was a political will to decarbonize all sectors in the economy um, without any compromises, yeah, then a lot more could be done than we are currently even considering. The conversation here is all around efficiency gains that could be realized without impacting user experience. And we're also making some implicit assumptions about cost effectivity. Um, so that, that's where we are at the moment. We are, we are uh, in a process of gathering data that is then provided to a discourse that we are not currently engaged in um, that could then make uh, uh, calls about the ICT sector reducing in absolute terms. Right? This is not a conversation that we're having at the moment. Yeah. Um, but it. But I think this. Um, yeah. But I, so, so 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 from that, I, I think it's very difficult to know what is the data that we need because we don't currently know what what are the the interventions that might be on the table um, in seven years. Yeah. So this sounds like one of the, I mean, the, the last slide was communication and outreach. It sounds like one of the, the things we should be doing is having a, a broader conversation about wh whether we are trying to optimize for, for keeping the same set of services or how are we changing the way people use the network and how are regulators changing the people that the way people use the network to try and force down usage and how we can be part of that conversation. All right, uh, I'm conscious that we're, we're getting very short on time. Um, does anyone have any concluding remarks? Anything, final things to say? Just to hope that um, someone is capturing the chat windows and will share the chat window comments and pointers because they're it's a wonderful conversation going on on the sidelines. Yeah, that's certainly true. So, Cindy, are we recording the chats? I think Cindy sent it for last time, so I think she is. Oh, I think, I, I, think I missed that one. Okay, thank you. You didn't see it for last time. I saw the transcript of the uh, session, but not the chat. Right. I'm not actually sure whether the chat is uh, captured in the the video recording, but I can make a copy of the chat before I close the meeting. Excellent. Thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you. All right, with that, I think we're, we're about done for the day. Uh, Yari, do you have anything to finish up with? No, I, I, I thank you all. It's been a very active discussion, different uh, viewpoints and lots of data, but also, I guess, um, some missing data. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the things that we need to talk about also tomorrow, if we can 
improve on that aspect as well, not just uh, first understand what needs to be improved and then and, um, figure out the improvements. And I guess um, I was trying to write some high level, very high level conclusions from the session and that I came up with. We have some understanding of the imp environmental impacts, at least some bracketing, like this is roughly what we're talking about. And, and most people seem to be telling, at least from that perspective, a similar story. Um, we also seem to have agreement that some most alarmist stories may not actually be factual. Um, but then, of course, still ICT and Internet uh, uses, you know, fair amount of energy and any savings there uh, would actually be material, like uh, size of Norway even. So we should probably pursue that and there's, there's probably effort needed to even sort of maintain the status quo because the engineers had to work hard to you know keep the levels uh, where they are today and and we need to do that in the future as well that's in part on us and also um it may actually be even harder in the future if Moore's law gets or it's more difficult to follow just Moore's law and and um rely on that and that's, that's, that's what i have and it's really not clear that sustaining at the current that, that keeping things at the current usage are sustainable either so yep all right exactly. thank you everyone this this has been a f fascinating discussion um we reconvene at the same time tomorrow uh, and uh I, what is the discussion tomorrow is um improvements protocol improvements implementation improvements uh, and incentives so I, I hope to see you all again tomorrow Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thanks all. Very interesting. Or is it? Thank you very much. Bye.